Okay, did you learn to read and write? The Cherokee had no written language until 1821 when the Cherokee syllabary was created by a chief named Sequoia. A syllabary is an alphabet that is made up of sets of syllables rather than letters. Sequoia saw that the new settlers had papers with writing on them. Papers rustled like leaves and talked to people through written language. He called them talking leaves. When he saw these talking leaves, Sequoia decided that the Cherokee must have talking leaves too. For 12 years, he worked hard making talking leaves. First, his daughter, Ahoyka, helped him draw hundreds of pictures, one picture for each word in Cherokee, but it was too hard to remember what every picture meant. Then he decided to make a symbol for each Cherokee sound. They took letters from the English alphabet and they created some letters of their own. Together, they made the, the Cherokee syllabary. The Cherokee syllabary had 85 characters, one character for each sound in Cherokee. Once you learned the characters, you could write anything in Cher the Cherokee language. Many Cherokee learned to read and write in only a few days. They didn't have crazy words like we do. So they didn't have to have spelling test, whatever it sounded like, that's how it was spelled. Soon after Sequoia had made the Cherokee syllabary, the tribe printed its own newspapers in English and Cherokee. Today, Cherokee children learn to read and write in English and in Cherokee. Some even use a computer that speaks Cherokee. Sequoia and Hoya were the first people to have made up a written language all by themselves. The tall Sequoia tree, the largest in America, is named in Sequoia's honor. Here are some Cherokee words that are written in the syllables of the Cherokee syllabary. All the symbols of the syllabary are shown on page 79. We'll look at that later. It's pretty cool, right? Looks like a D and a weird little, not sure what that is. That is the written word um, ama, which means water. This one means fish. This one means tree. And that one means sequoia. I wonder if we can figure out how to write our names. Maybe we can do that once we get back to school. How did you worship if you were a Cherokee? The Cherokee were religious. You would believe in spiritual beings who created the earth, the sun, and the moon, and the stars. That's right. In some sense, right? God made those things. He spoke them. And they were created. You believe that eagles and rattlesnakes, fire, smoke, corn, crystal quartz, the sun, and the moon, and the number seven were all sacred things. That means they were holy and special. Religious priests guide, guided the Cherokee. Priests were singled out in childhood. Twins had an especially good chance of becoming priests. <laughs> if you were picked out to be a priest, your training was different than that of your friends. You would be taught how to use herbs and medicines, and you would learn how to use quartz, crystals, and sacred ceremonies. Quartz was a special rock for the Cherokee. In every council house, a large, a large quartz crystal was kept with the other sacred objects. We have quartz that are in, the, in our mountains. You actually mine for it. They go into the earth and get, get it out. It's like a clear rock. I think we saw it whenever we went gem mining. Some of you got some, some quartz in your bags. Okay. Yoa, or the Great Spirit, was, one of, was the one supreme Cherokee god. The Yoa was so sacred, sacred that only a priest could say his name out loud. After European Christian missionaries arrived in, in their land, many Cherokee became Christians. The Cherokee belief in the Great Spirit made it easy for them to believe in the one Christian God. Yeah, I think that, the, that they just didn't know his name. They didn't know who God was, but they really wanted to worship him. He, they knew there was one true God. They just didn't know his name. They didn't know Jesus. But when the missionaries came, they told them all about it. What would you celebrate? Festivals were held every year. These festivals celebrated important seasonal events. There were many different kinds of food. There was music and dancing. Red wooden water drums and long gourd rattles kept steady beats. Carved cane flutes played melodies. Dancers with leg rattles made of tortoise shells moved in a circle. Shaka 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 went the rattles. You danced until you were too tired to go on. That might be a fun thing to make like rattles for the ankles. You shake them around as you dance. Maybe we can figure out how to do that too. That would be fun. 
The first new moon of spring was celebrated in March. The green corn dance was in August when the young corn was ready for tasting. The ripe corn ceremony was held in September when the corn was harvested. The friendship ceremony, or Atahuna, was held in the fall. This was the time to forget grudges and to build friendships. Homes were cleaned, old household things were burned, new clothes were made, and worn-out clothes were burned. Then the family fire was put out. Otahuna was a time to begin a new year with new things and new feelings. A new sacred fire was started with the coals from the old fire. Embers from this fire were carried to each home to re relight the family fires. Otahuna lasted seven days and nights. There were, dan there were dances every night. Men, wo women, girls, and boys danced for love, friendship, and new beginnings. A special dance, the booger dance, was enjoyed by everyone, especially the children. That sounds funny. Men traded clothing with a friend and put on scary wooden masks. The masks represented enemies, evil spirits, or creatures. The men would burst into a home or a council house pretending they were enemies and do silly things that made the enemy look foolish. At other times, the men danced around the fire acting like clowns as children tried to guess which was their father. The chief dance was a festival held every seven years. They did, set, they did things in sevens because they thought that the number seven was sacred. What happened if you got sick? Oh, look at that little girl laying there. The Cherokee believed that sickness was caused by animals seeking revenge to harm the people for the harm that people did to them. They were also believed that plants were the friends of people and would fight sicknesses. Every plant had special healing powers. The plants told the Cherokee, I will help man when he calls upon me in his need. This is how Cherokee medicine began. If you got sick, your mother or grandmother would care for you. She would find special plants to make medicines to help you feel better. The Cherokee had 400 plants they used for medicine. If the medicines did not work, then she would get the village medicine man. He would say special prayers for you to drive the sickness out of your body. He would also treat you with, with his medicine plants. When a person died, the body was put in a coffin and buried. The Cherokee believed that your spirit went back to visit all the places you had lived. We know what the truth is though, right? Seven days after a person died, a dance was held to speed the soul of the person on its way. The grave was not visited for fear that it would bring bad luck. They didn't have the Bible so that they didn't know what was true and what wasn't. What could you do for that sick girl? She could take medicine. She could rest to get better. We could pray for her and Jesus could make her better too. All right, let's turn this page. What games did you play? We saw some games. Well, that wasn't the Cherokee. That was the other Indian girls playing that game where they threw the bags with the sticks. Let's see what this game is called. Boys enjoyed a game called hawk fighting. To play, two boys crouched down facing each other. Each boy put his knees under his chin and then grabbed his legs with his arms so he looked like a ball. A friend put a long stick under his knees and arms and each player tried to tip his opponent over. Well, one is a ball? That's funny. The first to get tipped over was the loser. Chunky was another fun game for boys. To play, a stone disc was rolled across a flat field. The players armed with spears chased the disc. The players threw their spears at the stone and the stone stopped rolling.